welcome, my name is Ryan Boyd and I'm one of the directors at Integra Financial. Uh, within this session we're going to be covering off a bit about protection insurances. Um, I think it's a, uh, a worthwhile point um, for anyone that is taking out finance or wish to provide security for them or their family. So, not in any particular order, let's begin with life assurance or term assurance as it's known as as well. So life assurance or term assurance provides a lump sum payment in the event of death and with a lot of insurers now in the event of diagnosis of a terminal illness. There's two variations of life assurance. There's level term and decreasing term. Level term simply means that whatever value of money that you insure yourself for remains consistent throughout the policy term. So let's say, for example, you insure yourself for £100,000 over 20 years. What it means is regardless of when you claim throughout that 20 year term, you will pay out, or get paid I should say, £100,000. Decreasing term however, would reduce in line with the mortgage um, or insurable value. So let's say for example, you've got a mortgage of £100,000 over 20 years, and you insure yourself for 100,000 over 20 years, the policy will reduce down to zero at the end of the term. Now, lenders may impose either a mortgage interest reduction or they will impose a fixed percentage reduction. Now, by that I mean the speed in which the policy value reduces. Consult a qualified advisor, check the illustrations and see which will work best for you. Either way, both policies pair in the event of death. Now, there's a slight difference in premium cost. Level term premiums will be slightly higher than that of a decreasing term policy. The reason being is because your benefit is guaranteed to remain the same throughout the duration. Whereas with decreasing, obviously the value is reducing, therefore the premiums are reduced as well. That's not to mean that the premiums will keep on reducing month on month, it just means that you get basically an initial discount on the premium up front. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so that's life assurance or term assurance. The next policy is slightly more intricate, is critical illness. Uh, there's a lot of insurers in the market who offer critical or serious illness policies. The premiums and the policy benefits are, are completely different from insurer to insurer. So it's important that you look at what you're getting for your money and not be too driven by the premium amount. Critical illness or serious illness cover provide you with covering in events such as uh, diagnosis of cancer, heart attack, having a stroke, uh, loss of sight, loss of limbs, or even in some cases down to third degree burns. So things that could affect your life and be serious or critical to you, but something that you could potentially recover from. Now, the benefit with critical illness provision is that, let's say for example, um, you were diagnosed with a serious illness. 12, 24 months down the line you recovered from that illness and you had a payout. The insurer would not reclaim that money from you once it's paid out, even though you've recovered. Why is this a benefit to you? If you have any medical expenditure, you have any existing debt, that lump sum can be used to either pay off the debt or help you with any medical costs. So it's a huge advantage in that regard. Critical illness policies can be offered on a level or decreasing term basis, much like your life assurance policies. And again, the premiums will differ depending on the type of variation you wish to take advantage of. So that's a little bit about critical illness. The next policy I would like to run through with you is income protection. Income protection basically, as the title suggests, protects your income. So this means that the insurer will generally and typically cover you for between 50 and 60% of your pay. The reason why they won't pay you for the full amount is quite honestly, if they're paying you a large sum of money or your full salary, it's probably going to discourage you from going back to work too quickly. Insurers, as well as paying the 50 to 60%, will pay out for up to 12, 24 months, or in some cases, the term of your mortgage uh, that you have or another set term that you have in mind. Please keep in mind, premiums will obviously increase the longer the payout period is. So think, keep, keep that in mind and think about that. The other thing that can affect premium is your deferment period. Now it's very common for employers to provide, especially if you're employed, a form of uh, sickness benefit. 
Now this could range from three months to six months to 12 months. Depends on your employer. One thing I would say is always double check your employer benefits. So deferment period basically means the amount of time that you're going to defer your claim by. So let's say for example, I fall over today and I break my arm. My employer would pay out three months full pay, but then nothing thereafter. So in essence, I could if I wanted to, if I had no savings or no other contingency in the background supporting financially, claim on my income protection after the three months. So I create a deferment period of three months. The longer the deferment period, the cheaper your premiums will become. So again, the deferment period and the length of time you wish to claim for will have an impact on your premium. Clearly, as well as the value of money you're looking to insure yourself for. With income protection policies, it'd be good to note the fact that you'll be assessed at the point of applying, but also assessed at the point of claiming. So if your income is vastly different from the point of applying to the point of claiming, you may find a reduction in the value of benefit, but still have been paying a higher end premium, or maybe even lower end premium if you've underinsured yourself. So it's important that you keep a regular review of your insurances, either independently or through a qualified advisor, to make sure that you're insured for the right value. And that goes the same for your critical illness and your life assurance policies. Good to review them and keep an eye on them, just the same as you would do with mobile phone cover, car insurances and other such insurances. So, life cover, critical illness, income protection. Three key areas that we've covered off with you. Another area which I'd like to cover off is family income benefit. Now, with the critical illness cover and the life assurance which I've explained, they pay out a lump sum of money. With family income benefit, you'll be protected in the event of death and or in the event of critical illness, but instead of paying out a lump sum of money, it will pay out an annual income. The benefit of that being that you haven't got a lump sum of money sat in the account, which could be eroded by inflation, instead pays you a proportion of the benefit year on year to the value that you need. It's very common that families with children take these benefits to replace the loss of income uh, from a loss of life or, or what have you. It's not to say it's a, a relevant benefit for you. Consult an advisor, look at the options available and make your decision on what's better suited for you. So life cover, critical illness, income protection, family income benefit, ticked off. Other areas that we'd like for you to be aware of are whole of life. Whole of life, as the term suggests, means that you're insured for the whole of your life. These policies are generally and commonly used for covering um, wealth management, so covering inheritance tax bills, um, covering funeral costs, or just the benefit for wealth creation for family. That type of insurance, you've got to be very careful. Please seek professional advice from a qualified advisor to run through the policy benefits. With any of the insurance that was mentioned to you and discussed with you today, it's important to understand that they may or could have an impact on your inheritance tax liabilities. So as well as see, seeking advice from a qualified advisor, it would be wise and prudent to speak to a qualified financial advisor and tax advisor. There are ways that you can support yourself by ways of ensuring you have a suitable will in place and trusts in place as well. Again, seek the professional's advice, get support with that, and it will help you in the, um, the unfortunate case that you may need to claim on your policy throughout its lifetime. Stepping away from the personal protection, the other area that we need to look at is buildings and contents cover. When you're taking finance out on a property, the mortgage company or the financial institution will generally want to see that you've got a suitable buildings policy in place to protect the build. That could be in the event of fire or flooding. That's kind of the minimum or sort of basic requirement lenders want. The addition to that would be contents covered to protect your personal belongings within that property. We see it time and time again that people focus very much on the budget and the premium and not on what they're getting for that. Have a shop around, see what's available and pay attention to the policy documents. It's not an interesting conversation to have with people about their insurances or for you to listen to, but I promise you it's well worth the time. So it's well worth investing your time into reviewing insurances correctly 
because you'll soon regret it if you haven't got the right benefit when you come to claim. That's it from me. Um, sorry if I bored you to uh, bored you to death. And apologies for the pun. But I hope you can take something away from this and have a greater understanding of what benefits are available to you, uh, how they can support you, how they can support your family, and equally as important, how they can support your home. Thanks again, enjoy the rest of your day, and hopefully we'll see you back soon. Bye-bye. Master, master, teach me.